Filmmaker Chris McKay is one of the most exciting new voices working in cinema. He began his career as an intern on John Hughes's Uncle Buck before directing a number of music videos, commercials, and taking on a range of positions across all departments within the industry. This would eventually lead to McKay becoming an editor and then director of the cult TV show Robot Chicken. During work on the show's fifth season, McKay was hired by Disney to assist in the development of a new anime show. During this time, the production designer on the Disney pilot would suggest to McKay that he meet with the filmmaking duo Phil Lord and Christopher Miller. The pair had completed Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs and were set to make The Lego Movie, as well as rebooting a feature-length take on 21 Jump Street. McKay would meet with Lord and Miller and was hired as a third director to supervise the animation. As Lord and Miller traveled to New Orleans to prep 21 Jump Street, studio confidence in the Lego movie was beginning to fade, resulting in the project losing its green light. The studio wanted it to be a movie simply just for kids, whereas the filmmakers felt they had material that held a distinct multi-generational appeal. For the lead role of the Lego man, Emmett, Warners weren't sold on the idea that a yellow-headed Lego minifig with limited facial expression could carry a movie and emote what the script needed. The studio suggested that Emmett's face have teeth, or a tongue, or animatronic eyes, or any one of a bunch of other bad ideas. McKay's job now was to get Warner Brothers to regain their faith in the project and to recommit to the Lego movie. McKay would meet with the studio head. He was asked, Why are you in my office? I hired two other guys to direct the thing. Who are you? McKay would repitch the movie. He explained that the timeless yellow minifig would work, and working alongside the animation and FX company Animal Logic, the team would create an animation test where Emmett would audition for his role. The test was a success. Emmett got the job, and Lord and Miller's The Lego Movie was now back on track. Three years later, on February 7th, 2014, the movie opened to critical and commercial success, grossing $468.1 million worldwide against a budget of $65 million. The Lego movie earned a bunch of award nominations and wins, and would lead to Warner's greenlighting a whole universe of Lego movies. Lego Batman, voiced by actor Will Arnett, had appeared in the Lego movie, but it was now time for the Caped Crusader to headline his own adventure. Chris McKay was the immediate first choice to make the film in what would be his solo directorial debut. Arnett returned to lend his voice talent to Batman and Bruce Wayne. Zach Galifianakis would star as the Joker. Michael Cera was cast as Robin the Boy Wonder, aka the orphan Dick Grayson. Rosario Dawson would play Barbara Gordon and Batgirl. Ray Fiennes would voice the role of Alfred Pennyworth, the butler, and Jenny Slate would feature as Harley Quinn. In amongst the familiar villains was the Riddler, the Penguin, Poison Ivy, and Mr. Freeze. And there was a welcome return for Harvey Two-Face Dent, as voiced by Billy D. Williams. The plot would see the Dark Knight save Gotham and its citizens from an evil blackmail plot enforced by the Joker. Once our hero has saved the day, again, he returns to his life of quiet solitude. But little does he realize he'll soon face his greatest threat. Not the Joker trying to conquer the city, but rather the prospect of letting people into his life. Batman's biggest fear involves forming relationships with others. He's afraid of getting close to people and then losing them. Batman banishes the Joker to the Phantom Zone, a prison for the universe's worst supervillains. But with the help of Harley Quinn, the Joker and the rest of the rogues gallery escape. To restore law and order to Gotham, and to defeat his villainous enemies, Batman must learn to work as part of a team. And fortunately, there are others willing to help him. The movie asks one question. Can the childish and vainglorious, yet ultimately deep down sensitive Batman ever discover true happiness? To help the brooding vigilante overcome his philophobia and avoidance issues, Alfred coerces Batman into adopting a teenage orphan named Dick Grayson, who becomes Batman's sidekick and adopted son. The Lego Batman movie was a critical and commercial success, attracting great reviews and taking $312 million at the box office. On December 5th, 2018, as The Lego Movie 2, the second part, 
also featuring LEGO Batman's third appearance in the LEGOverse, was weeks away from release, Will Arnett was asked about a sequel. He said, At this point, I don't want to rest on my laurels. You want to find a way to take what we know about Batman and tell new stories so that people aren't bored and don't think, we've seen that already. There's always talk about further films, but it depends whether there's an appetite for it and how people respond to this movie. Hopefully people enjoy it. And if it feels like there's still room to grow, then we'll do that. McKay was asked on Twitter by a fan whether or not a sequel to Lego Batman was in the works. McKay replied, Working on that right now. And so the previously unannounced project was now seemingly announced. During the promotional tour for Lego Batman, McKay would speak of some ideas for a sequel that had already been toyed around with. He said, I think if we do a sequel, there's a whole thing I want to do with all the people who played Batman. Get as many as will agree to do it. Get all their voices in somehow. There's sort of next level stuff that I think we could do once you start to establish this world and the characters. And I also love the rogues gallery so much. That's why I wanted to cast it with a bunch of these people, so that if there is a sequel or spin-off movie, we could do a crazy Ocean's Eleven or Suicide Squad movie with the rogues gallery, Batman and Super Friends, or get the other people who played Batman to play a significant role in the movie somehow. There's a bunch of things that I'd love to do. As work progressed, not much news was released. McKay was now also officially attached to direct a Nightwing live-action movie for Warner Brothers. The LEGO Cinematic Universe had by now already expanded, with the already released LEGO movie sequel and a LEGO Ninjago movie. The performance of the LEGO Movie 2 was now considered underwhelming. The original LEGO Movie had earned $469 million worldwide on a $60 million budget, and it had taken $69 million in its opening weekend alone. But its follow-up had now only taken $34.1 million. The 50% drop-off saw the film equated with other franchises like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Star Trek, and Independence Day, which had experienced a similar box office downturn. With 19 direct-to-DVD LEGO movies, 19 LEGO shorts, 14 TV specials, and 16 TV shows available to stream, it was feared that the special once-in-a-lifetime moment that the LEGO movie had signified had now lost a little of its allure. Meanwhile, previously, the LEGO Ninjago movie sadly also hadn't done as well as was hoped for. The film itself, if you're a fan of the material and the brand, was brilliant. The numbers, however, weren't. One by one, the nails were slowly being hammered into the casket of future LEGO movies. Despite the fact that Batman was a marquee name, the fear of further high-profile yet underperforming sequels now loomed large in an ever-changing landscape of theater versus streaming, as executives tried to figure out the potential appeal and unique selling point of what a sequel could offer, without simply retreading the same ground covered in the original. All of this would factor into the decision-making process when it came time for the renewal of rights to continue making LEGO movies. In December 2019, behind the scenes, Several studios began to make bids as the clock started to run down on the Warner Brothers deal. Leading the pack was Universal, who, while characters from the Lego Movie and Lego Batman would stay at Warner Brothers, had plenty of their own properties to play with. Perhaps Lego James Bond versus Lego Jason Bourne? Maybe a Lego Back to the Future? Lego Jurassic Park? The Lego Mummy? Lego Kung Fu Panda, Lego E.T., the potential's endless. And it was easy to see why the rights to make movies out of the iconic, colorful bricks were in high demand. Then, in April 2020, the deal was officially signed, and Universal now had a five-year deal to generate Lego movies based on their own intellectual properties, plus original ideas. Chairman of the studio, Donna Langley, said in their statement, to partner with such an iconic brand that remains relevant and is constantly evolving allows for creativity and storytelling. We're thrilled to start building out the next chapter of LEGO movies together as they continue to inspire curiosity and innovation. This now meant that LEGO Batman 2 was off the slate. Chris McKay would later reveal that Dan Harmon, the creator of Community and Rick and Morty, and Michael Waldron, who was a protege of Harmon, 
working with him since 2014 and serving as a writer-producer for the fourth season of Rick and Morty, had together written a full first draft of the screenplay that was to be titled Lego Super Friends. The news lit up the internet for a day, as McKay had told Collider that Dan and Waldron had done a first draft of the script that was really great. It was truly epic, both from an action standpoint and from a story standpoint. The structure was Godfather Part 2, a story about Batman's relationship to the Justice League now, as well as the formative moments of the Justice League then. The studio was leery of Lego Batman being an actual Batman movie, so I was constantly told to hold back. Audiences and subsequent movies like Into the Spider-Verse proved them wrong. I would have quadrupled down on making it as much of a real Justice League movie with lots of jokes, cameos, intersecting storylines, references, etc. It would have been a very dense movie as humanly possible. We had lots of great voice actors from the Lego movie and Lego Batman. The villain was going to be Lex Luthor and Omac. There's more, of course, lots of Aquaman, Wonder Woman, Lois. There was also going to be a big crossover at one point in the movie that you can only do in a Lego movie. I'm sure you can guess what it was. The thing that will probably never happen in a live action movie. I'm guessing McKay was hinting at a DC Marvel crossover, which sounds brilliant. Batman's password to the Batcave was Iron Man sucks, so who wouldn't want to see Batman finally coming face to face with Tony Stark's Iron Man? Or see Superman meet the Incredible Hulk? In my opinion, whether you're five years old or 105 years old, you got to admit, it did sound like an excellent prospect. Back in a 2017 interview, McKay had been asked, can we expect a Lego Batman movie too? If so, do you have any teases about what that might tackle story-wise? At the time, McKay answered, We're still talking about it. Lots of ideas. A Justice League Super Friends movie. A Rogues Gallery movie. One of the things that I've not talked about in the making of the Lego Batman movie is our plans for the Justice League scene. Two things were cut from it that I wished we could have done. The first was a scene where Batman who was pissed off that his friends didn't invite him to the party, destroyed all of their rides. So at the end of the movie, when Batman is changed and needed people, it made sense that he couldn't call them. He poured sugar in the gas tank of Wonder Woman's invisible jet, he used the crystal from Superman 2 to take away Superman's powers, and he overfed Aquaman's seahorse. The second's a little sadder. In the original conception of the scene, Batman shows up, and discovers his friends have thrown a party and didn't invite him. To make it worse, playing at the party is Prince and his band. Prince would have been the one to say the line, check your spam folder, when the others insisted that it was an oversight not to invite Batman. Waldron would share the canceled script's cover page on Twitter saying, loved this project and especially our title page. The cover page stated that not only was the project based on the Super Friends cartoon that first aired in the 70s, but also, unexpectedly, the Paul Thomas Anderson movie Boogie Nights. The next day, Waldron would say, I saw that McKay did a probably better job of describing it than I would. That was a fun project. It would have been really cool. It was a great sort of like time hopping story. As McKay said, a little bit of Godfather 2, a little bit of Boogie Nights. Really about the friendship between Batman and Superman and trying to investigate what went wrong between those two. I liked it. It was fun to write Superman. To get to write kind of a real wide-eyed version of the Dirk Diggler version of Superman, it was fun. That would have been a good one. Harmon had a lot of great Martian Manhunter jokes in there. And so, at the present time, there isn't much else to say. The Lego Batman movie was a hilarious, entertaining, joke-a-second, loving homage to Batman lore. It was expertly constructed and voiced, and its highly anticipated sequel is now yet another project that creative people spent time developing, only to see business decisions guillotine the project in its development phase. It's not outside the realm of possibility that Universal and Warner Brothers could come to a financial agreement that would allow the sequel to develop. It's unlikely, given that Warners now have their hands full with their live-action adaptations of The Batman, The Flash, and Black Adam, but it's not unthinkable given the inbuilt audience who would welcome such a movie. 
To quote Bruce Wayne himself, everything's impossible until somebody does it. Thanks for watching. The Lego Batman movie sequel, but it was going to be called something like Lego Super Friends. And it was going to be about ba Batman's relationship with Superman and the Justice League. And it would, it would, the structure, um, and, and not that I'm saying it as the quality of a movie like this, but the structure was Godfather 2, where you are, you're in the past with Batman, young Batman, young Superman forming the Justice League. Uh, you're seeing a very different version of Batman at that time. You're seeing a very interesting version of Superman and Superman and Lois Lane in the world. And then, and then at the same time, you're dealing with their relationships now and their fractured relationship now while they're trying to deal with Lex Luthor and Omac and a bunch of other supervillain. Uh, it, it was going to be a really fun special movie. And yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Batman back in. Forgot to drop the mic.